Glad to see all the fathers. Let's give the fathers a hand. Who's got something that they'd like to share about their father that they remember?
still my sin. He, uh, he showed me how to mow grass. He showed me how to do work with the mortar board, mortar, mixing mix, mixing plaster, mixing all that kind of stuff. But one of the important things he taught me was how to have fun fishing and hunting. Uh, when I went to pastor at First Baptist Church, Cuba, I had been going out there all my life with my dad and mom. And uh, people said, well, you know about this. And you know, I said, no. The only thing I knew about Cuba was where to fish, where to hunt, and what tavern to go to. <laughs> Those were the three things I knew pretty good. I shot a lot of pool. Never did, kind of like everything else that I did in sports. I was a jack of all sports, master of none. But it was, <laughs> it was, fathers are important. Fathers are important for us to have guidance. Sometimes they can be really strict. Sometimes they can be a little too soft. Uh, Fathers are important. Today, I'm going to be speaking about faith of our fathers. Faith is something that we have to we'll look at in Hebrews chapter 11, starting with verse 1. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, the men of old gained approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that when, so what we have seen is not made out of things which are invisible. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your blessings to us. Help us to have a good morning. Help us have a good Father's Day. May everything go well for everyone. May we be safe. Just thank you for your love, for your grace, and your mercy. And I pray, Father, that the Holy Spirit would take hold of my hand. Speak through me that I may preach the word that you would have me to preach. And may this day be a blessing to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Believers in Christ have to live by faith. We don't always see what's going on behind us. God has got everything in his hand. And he wants the very best for us. We have the greatest father in the world. We have God the Father. The almighty God. The sovereign God. The father of the world. The one who created the world. The universe. We need it. It makes me feel good to know that I have the faith enough to know that I can go to sleep. And no matter what happens... I will be with him because he is always with me. And when I wake up in the morning, I will have life. And every breath that I breathe when I get up in the morning is because God had given it to me. When difficult times happen, that's when our faith grows. I was thinking in the past few weeks, I've had to end up in the hospital overnight in the Boone Hospital. My legs wouldn't move. I'd move, I'd stand up and move, fall down. And I didn't know about that. And then the next week, we got COVID. Everything crammed in on us. But you know, I still believe that God had a purpose and a reason for all of it, he still does. He just hadn't shown us yet. He showed me because I, I realized that I need him when I'm going through those. There's nothing I can do about it. Yesterday, I had, or Friday, I had an MRI to find out why my legs are weak because I'm lazy. That's why. I, but they wanted me to take an MRI. So anyway, all of this, I want to say, whatever you're going through, God knows. Amen. God's there. God will take you through it. It may not be enjoyable. But it will be something that you know. As I think about Josh and Cody with their cancer, I think how God helped me 
through leukemia and brought me up and he had a purpose for me. And that was to serve him. To serve him with gladness. And I do. I trust him with everything that I have. I have a wonderful family. I have to trust him with them. Because I can't take care of them every day. I can't be with them all the time. But he can. Faith is an assurance. The conviction of things to, to come by God. We know that something's going to happen for God, from God. And we know that through his presence, we can live by faith. Trust in him. Trust God. Don't lean on your own understanding, but trust God in your heart. By faith in this world, we need, to, we need to live by faith in this world. This world is a crummy world in a lot of different places. But I'm thankful I live in Mexico, Missouri. I'm thankful that I live out from the hustle and bustle of the cities. But I'm thankful that I grew up there and learned what it was like in San Luis County. But I know that I am where I am because God wanted me here. This is what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at a couple of the faith heroes in, in chapter 11 of Hebrews. The first one will be Noah, chapter 11, verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned by God about things not seen, in reverence, prepared an ark for the salvation of his household, by which he condemned the world and became the heir of the righteous, which is according to faith. Noah. It says in Matthew 24, 38, that... Noah, before Jesus comes again, the days like Noah will be seen. Marriages broken, mixed marriages, different things happening. Sexual perversion, sin, evil, growing and growing before God comes again. Same thing was happening with Noah. Noah warned them. Can you imagine? They've never seen rain. They've had heavy dew, but they didn't know what rain was. And here's Noah building this huge ship, this huge boat. Can you imagine the ridicule, the mocking, <coughs> all the things that happened there? And even from his family, probably. You want us to work on a boat out in the middle of the desert? Nothing going on? Yeah, we need to put pitch on the outside, pitch on the inside, so, so it doesn't leak. Pitch is a tarry substance. Put it inside and outside so it doesn't leak when, when it rains, when we go through the flood. Okay, yeah, whatever you say. There was no questioning from Noah. He did not question. He just did it. He lived by faith, trusting God to know what he's doing, even when we don't understand. <coughs> Noah kept warning them. Warning the people, you better get ready. There's going to be a storm, and you're not going to survive. <coughs> Noah was a father who loved his kids. He had three boys and three daughters. Eight of them boarded that ark and God closed the door and saved them. But Noah was concerned about his family. <coughs> God had given him the, the word that he, if he would do this, he and his family would be saved. So what did Noah do? He built an ark. If my family is going to be saved from this disaster, I better do something. And I better do what God wants me to do. He knew the dimensions. He knew everything about how high, how tall, how wide, how long. He knew everything. Because God had told him. 
And he trusted his heavenly father who said, do this. And Noah said, okay, I'll do it. No matter what goes on, I'll do it. And then when it started raining, people started wondering what's going to happen. Can you imagine beating on the door, wanting people, people wanting in? Folks, people are beating on the door right now for Jesus Christ. We need to open the door to them and say, all right, come. There's going to be a day when the door's going to close and there will be no more time for you to come. You know, Jesus, life is going to be Noah. Noah has been with, with God. He knew what was going to take place. He didn't see rain before, but he knew it was going to come. Noah, by faith, went ahead and built according to God's measurements. Noah's task for his family, his love for his family, took his family. And you know what? He had faith to know that he didn't know how long he was going to be on that ship. He didn't know how many days. But he took enough food for his family and for all the animals of the world. I wish he would love the mosquitoes back love me for But he's got a reason for mosquitoes that make sure that we still have blood. There are a few. We we have <coughs> we have Noah getting ready. I can't can't. One of the most beautiful things that we've ever seen, Judy and I together, was Sight and Sound Theater in Branson. We saw Noah. That was super. At halftime, I mean, not halftime, when, when it broke, you're sitting in the dark, and all at once, when the lights come on, you're surrounded by animals all around that theater. Live animals, but most of them are not live. But it was so awesome to see all of those animals and think, how in the world did they do that? They didn't have cranes to lift the wood up. They didn't have everything that we have today. And they built the them God told him to take animals, two of each, and go on. And he did. Noah knew by faith that his family would be saved. Folks, that's what I want for my family. I want to be saved and I want to be safe. And I will do whatever I can to protect them. But I can't always protect them. God can. Then we see Abraham. Abraham, the man of, of much of hope. Abraham, 8 through 12. By faith, Abraham, when he was as called, obeyed going out of the place which he was to receive or inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he lived as an alien in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, dwelling in the twins, tents, with Isaac and Jacob, followed fellow heirs of the same promise. For he was looking for a city which has foundations, whose are architect and builders God. By faith, even Sarah herself Received the ability to conceive even beyond the proper time of life, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, there was one, even the one man, and him as good as dead, as, as many descendants, as the stars of heaven, the number, the innumerable, the innumerable, as the sand which is on the sea. Abraham. Abraham was called to go. A lot of people 
people have jobs and they, they think they're doing okay and all at once God says, no, you need to go somewhere else. It's a better job waiting for you. Not knowing what's ahead. Abraham didn't know what the promised land would look like except what God had told him which would be a place of milk and honey. But he moved there as an alien. He didn't belong there. He lived in tents while he looked and saw the foundations of the cities. But he lived in tents. Noah, I mean Abraham just went, took his son, took his wife, trusted God to take care of him. Faith is action. You don't just believe something without doing something. When God gives you faith, he gives you obedience. Has you be obedient. And Abraham was obedient. He believed in the Heavenly Father and the Heavenly Father said, go. No question. Nothing about how we're going to make it. How we're going to do it. Just do it. Abraham was promised a son. In Genesis 5, 5 and 6, it's the coolest story you ever want to hear. Here he is sitting outside his tent. Three men come up and say, hey, your, your wife's going to have a baby. Next year we'll be back and we'll look at him. Sarah was over 90. He was over 90, almost 100. And in the tent, they could hear Sarah going, yeah, right. Oh, yeah, right. Sure. I'm going to have a baby now. I'm 90 years old. My womb is dead. There's nothing left. Abraham didn't laugh out loud when you could hear his chuckle on the beat. Whatever you say. But he believed. Nothing happened without faith. And faith by grace. And grace gave Abraham and Sarah a son. A wonderful son named Isaac gave him that son. And he would be the father of nations, just like Noah would. I mean, Abraham was the father of nations. Isaac would have all these descendants. And all at once, question that. God said, all right. I gave you this son. How much do you love me? Make him an offering for me. Sacrifice him. What just Rob drives me crazy? I wouldn't want to give him up sacrificing. I've told you by the time that he had his heart surgery. And I fought with God. Whose child is this? Finance and it's yours. Abraham has given them go to this mountain, go up on top, put an altar up, and sacrifice yourself. Now, here they go. They're going up toward the mountain. And Abraham told the servants, stay back here with the cold. God will provide. And as they were going, Samuel's, I mean, as <laughs> he looked at his dad, said, All right, Dad, let me, let me see something there. I know we've got the wood. I know we've got the fire. But where's the sacrifice? And Abraham so eloquently said, God will provide. And just as he was ready to strike him dead with a knife, God said, hold on. Don't do it. And right behind him, in the thicket, God provided a ram for the sacrifice. God provides. That's what Abraham 
named that mountain God of the Bible. Jehovah Jireh, God will provide. God will provide for you. Even then when it seemed almost impossible, almost ridiculous in our thoughts. God's got a better plan. God's got a better understanding of what's going to happen. God wanted to see how far Abraham would go with his faith. How far that faith would take him. And it took him all the way to that point where he had the knife and the ready to stab. Sacrifice his son. That's faith. Faith that brought him to where he is. The fact that his son saw that all what was going on. God promised Abraham that he would have a son and there would be very many descendants. God answers his prayers. He answers his promises. His promises are real. And at that time, God had a promise. And he told Abraham that Isaac would be that man. Through all of this, his faith never wavered. Because God had promised. Well, God's promising you something. That he's got a plan for you. You may not know what it is. You may not see what it is. But God's got a plan. And his promise is that he will take care of you. He will take care of all your family. He will provide. He will give. Faith and obedience. He trusted and he was obedient to the point of even taking his son's life. Totally trusting God to do what he said and he promised. Fathers of yesterday and fathers of today need to have that kind of faith. Waiting for the Lord. Waiting for the Lord to come. Waiting. Have faith. God promised that one day Jesus will come back and receive us unto himself. And where he is, there we may be also. We have to have that faith. We must trust God's promise. He will provide. We don't always see everything that's going on. But we do know in Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. We know that. And we can trust him. We can have faith to know that whatever is going on in your life, God will take care of it. When Judy and I left from New Orleans Seminary, 1980. Her father didn't think much of me. Her mom didn't think much of me. Taking her grandbabies and their baby girl to an unknown place called New Orleans is still unknown. I don't know. But it, we left. We had a thousand dollars in our pocket. Got down to New Orleans. Found our apartment. And God provided me some extra money to do a drywall, some drywall work across the lake for Hank's tram in the building. So he was the coach of the Orleans Saints at the time. Building some condos. That we got a little extra money there. Now when we got there, we had to pay our dues and pay our so that took care of that thousand dollars. Judy applied for work in different places. Finally, she got two calls in one day. One at the bank, one at LSU. She took her to LSU. God provides. We made it. God provides for everything. Faith of our family. Another good thing you need to know is when you're going through faith and when you're going through these things, God is with you. Hebrews 13, verse 5 says that He will never leave you, He will never forsake you, He will always be there for you. 
Aren't you glad he's always here for you? I am. I'm thankful that I know that no matter what happens in my life, God is there. No matter how far I stray, God is there. No, no matter what's going on in my life, God is with me. And he will always be with me. Lo, I am with you always. That's why my knees won't fly. It says, Lo, I am with you always. It said, Up in the air. It says, Lo, I am with you. But when I, I am always there for you. Oh, folks, I'm going to tell you something. We have to have that kind of faith that tells us. If he tells me to go build an ark, I better go build an ark. If he tells me to walk through that wall, I better start walking. He'll either move that wall or I'll be flat on my back. But if he tells me, I'll be all right. If he calls you to go somewhere, go. If he tells you to go out and tell the people about Jesus Christ and, and perish. If he tells you to go, go. Don't hold back. Don't stand still. Go, whatever it is, wherever you're going. When God wants you to go, you better go. By faith, we trust God for salvation. I believe that God has planned a way. It says, Ephesians 2 8 says, By grace, we are saved through faith. Not of our own. So we don't have any reason to boast. It's all because of God's grace. Salvation is open to anyone who would receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior by faith. Given to them by grace. Freely given the gift of salvation. Fathers, live your life by faith. Trusting Him to take care of you and your family. Follow him. Let him lead. Let him direct. Let him be all he wants to be. Don't hold back. Don't question. Go. Judy was not through. But we, but we made it. Because we obey. Obey is what takes priority. We obey him. Fathers, have a great day. May God bless you all. As we, if there's somebody that needs to know Jesus Christ to be come today, let us sing one song, one verse of a song, and we'll be dismissed. But if you have a prayer that needs, let us pray with you. Whatever the need is, this is your time. God's invitation. May you come to Him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for supporting us, keeping us in your loving hand. I pray that we would faithfully go from here, knowing that you're going to be there with us, taking care of our every need. 